Welcome. This is 49H2 and this is physicality of a parallel plate capacitor. How does its size and structure affect its performance? So here we have a schematic of a parallel plate capacitor. Two parallel pieces of conducting material. One will be the positive plate, one will be the negative plate. There's a gap in between which could be empty so it could contain a vacuum. It could be filled with a gas like air. It could be filled with a polymer, some kind of insulator. It could be filled with a oxide layer. Um, could be quite a complicated structure. We call it the dielectric and it turns out that certain dielectrics give higher capacitances than other materials so there's a lot of technology about the dielectrics uh, if you actually look at capacitors some of them seem very small and insignificant they're just basically a couple of plates with an oxide between and then others seem like they're, they're, they're manufactured these are in a can we have some kind of structure inside there. There's a there's a negative end and a positive end. These are so-called uh, wet electrolytic capacitors. Um, big capacitors don't necessarily hold have the largest capacitance. Sometimes a little small capacitor because a different technology can have a very high capacitance. So um, some of them can only have a potential difference one way. Some of them can be uh, alternating signals. There's a tremendous variety in their design, makeup and manufacture. What we say here is the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor depends upon its cross-sectional area. That's this guy. The area of the gap rather than the two plates. It's, it's the gap and the perpendicular gap size. That is the distance between the two plates. And then a thing called the dielectric constant of the insulator in the gap. And, you know, the way that equations work is you say, what happens to the capacitance if I increase? Well, what happens to the capacitance if I increase the area? Well, if the capacitance is the amount of charge you can have for a given potential difference, if I have more area, I can surely get more charges on there. So I would expect the capacitance to increase as the area increases, and so the area goes on top. And then the other thing is the uh, D. Well, if D increases and capacitance increases, then a plate on the moon paired with a plate on the earth would have a tremendous capacitance and we'd notice it. That's clearly not the case. It must be that as D increases, the capacitance decreases. And so uh, I'll put D on the bottom. Could it be a D squared? Well, there's not really a spherical symmetry, so it's unlikely to be a D squared. It's, it's more likely to be a D. And then we have a constant of proportionality called uh, epsilon naught, E-P-S-I-O-L-O-N. -E That's not spelt right. Ep -si oh man, I wish I'd not done that. Naught, N-O-U-G-H-T. Um, I'm a lousy speller. And then we have this thing, the uh, um, kappa, which is basically the, uh, the dielectric constant. And this is a figure of merit. This is a number. And if it's vacuum, it's one. If it's air, it's one. If it's an insulating material other than those two, it may have a number bigger than one. It's like a freebie. You get more capacitance because you have this thing there, as I'll explain later. Incidentally, if I misalign my plates, if I put one plate like that, and then I, rather than putting the plate directly above it, I, you know, misalign the plate, then it's only the area that counts. And in fact, there's a way you can tune capacitors to the value you want. You get two plates that can overlap each other, 
and when you only want a little bit of capacitance you don't allow them to to overlap by much and if you want more capacitance you allow them to overlap by more so you can mechanically uh, tune the capacitance you want and on old radio sets there used to be a big dial at the front big handle and you'd turn that and you were literally turning a capacitor to change the capacitance of the capacitor let's go to the next page and let's say how big is the gap how big is the gap between the plates of a circular air filled 3 microfarad parallel plate capacitor what do I know so I know that um, K is equal to 1 because it's air filled and I know that the capacitance is equal to 3 times 10 to the minus 6 farads and what else do I know I know R equals 4 times 10 to the minus 2 meters I also know something else actually I know this value of epsilon naught and the value of epsilon naught is it's a uh, 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 12 sorry 10 to the uh, minus 12 farad per meter I'm going to need that later and so let's visualize though I am given the radius and the equation says that my capacitance is equal to k a epsilon naught over r over d sorry i got r on the brain over d and this is equal to k let's think about a there's no a on that list but it's a circular plate and so that would be pi r squared epsilon naught over d and so c is equal to 1 times pi times 4 times 10 to the minus 2 squared times 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 12 all over 4 times 10 to the minus uh, sorry my gap shame on me uh, oh, I want to know my gap uh, over D uh, so that means it's late at night <laughs> that means that I had my capacitance which was 3 times 10 to the minus 6 so now let's do the thing right and rearrange d is equal to 1 times pi times 4 times 10 to the minus 2 squared times 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 12 all divided by 3, point, ooh, 3 times 10 to the minus 6 so d is equal to and for this it's easy to make a calculated error so let me uh, take you through it 1 times pi pi equals and then times and I do it this way 4 second ee to the minus 2 enter times 4 second ee to the minus 2 just makes it easier you just do it twice times 8.8 .8 second ee to the minus 12 enter and then divided by 3 second ee to the minus 6 enter and this is going to be well 0 0.0000000 000 000. I got a count on here 1 2 3 4 5 6 zero one five if ever there was a reason to have scientific notation this is it don't put the answer down like that put it down as 1.5 times 10 to the minus minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 minus 7 minus 8 minus 8 and it's a distance so it's going to be in meters 
And is that answer up there? 1.8 times 10 to the minus, 1.5 times 10 to the minus eight meters, so. Fair enough. I'm gonna go away and learn how to spell epsilon, and I'll see you next time.